Imagining it was the hard part, but the actual execution of it was really quite simple. You really can't go wrong with the original Matrix. The action keeps you on the edge of your seat, the story won't leave your mind for days, and the cinematography leaves you thinking, how did they do that? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out how Bill Pope crafted the look of the Matrix with the collaboration of the Wachowski sisters, looking at the equipment he used, the use of lighting and other practical effects, as well as where the green comes from. When it comes to equipment, you have to make sure what you have can do everything you want it to, even if that means substituting a couple of things. And unfortunately, that's what happened on The Matrix. However, it seemed to work out pretty well. So, when it comes to the cameras, the main ones Pope used were Panavision's Panaflex Platinum and their Panastar. He also used a specialist photosonics camera for any slow motion scenes, as the 4ERHS, which is what I presume he used, had the ability to shoot at 425 frames per second. So, like I've mentioned many times, Panavision is pretty much the gold standard when it comes to film cameras, and the Platinum is no exception. However, they did have to bring it over from the US, as where they were shooting in Sydney couldn't meet their requirements. As for the lenses, Pope stuck with Panavision and went with their Primos, which feature an incredible range of focal lengths, a solid T-stop of 1.9 across the board with a couple of 1.8s thrown in there, and they just have a really premium look. I shot in Super 35 partially because I had too many cameras to come up with enough anamorphic lenses, and also because of the sheer size of the sets. I felt that I might have had a little trouble lighting the sets to get the stock we need for anamorphic. As for the stock, you can't go wrong with Kodak and their Vision 200T 5274 and 500T 5279. We shot all of the day exteriors and effects shots on 5274 and used 5279 for all of the interiors. I like the look of 79 and I like to see a little grain. So first of all, let's talk about the thematic side of lighting a film like this, because when you have two different worlds, it just makes sense to have a juxtaposition, whether that's in lighting or colour, or even a mix. Now here we can see that once Neo enters the Matrix, the lighting becomes much harsher, but I'd also say more low-key, especially when we aren't outside. The future world is cold, dark, riddled with lightning, so we left the lighting a bit bluer and made it dark as hell. Also, the future reality is very grimy because there's no reason to clean it, only the pods need to be sterile. Something you'll notice is that the Wachowskis quite like wide angles, which actually ended up being a bit of a pain for Pope and his team, since then, you can't light from the floor, and everything has to be rigged to the ceiling. However, the positive is this creates a rather broad ambience and frees up a lot of space for the stunts. I think as a whole though, the lighting in the Matrix is rather traditional, depending on the scene and where we are in the story. We see three-point lighting, high or low-key lighting, I mean, whatever it is, Pope has made it fit the scene, and there are little alterations to this method. Now, you can't make a video about the Matrix and not include the use of bullet time, because whilst it didn't originate in the Matrix, it was popularised by it. Now, this is a visual effect that is achieved by, or at least in the Matrix, by using a significant amount of still cameras that surround the subject. They then fire them all in small intervals and create an almost hyper slow motion effect. Now, when it comes to the Matrix, the camera path they used had all been planned beforehand in previs, then by using green screens and the track, Pope has made it as easy as possible to pretty much create a new shot type, or at least the best version of that shot type to date. Apart from the use of bullet time though, there were a lot of other practical effects. For example, the helicopter scene, which coincidentally did also have a bullet time setup, but more about the lighting here, they needed a lot of it, starting with 205 Ks, 500 PAR cans, which are just small LED lights, and four dinos shining through 12x12, 12 12. and then depending on the scene, Garside the gaffer would just add or take away lights. So let's clear something up. The Matrix is supposed to have a green tint. I've seen countless stories of people talking about how it was some mistake with the transfer to digital, and that's a lie, because from the words of the cinematographer Bill Pope, we can see that that was never the case. Additionally, since we wanted the Matrix to be unappealing, we asked ourselves, what is the most unappealing colour? I think we all agreed on green, so for those scenes, we sometimes used green filters, and I'd add a little bit of green in the colour timing. But to look more into the actual use of green, we can see that it's used to show separation between the real world and the simulation. 
obviously for the reason that it's an ugly colour, but also if we look towards the stereotypical meaning of green in film, we can see that it's often used to show perseverance, which could just be a coincidence. Lana and Lily wanted the Matrix to have two distinct worlds. There is the world in the 2197 future, in which we have the pods made by the computers, and then there's the present day Matrix world, which was designed to be a slightly unappealing reality. Onto the more obvious points that I have to mention because if I don't someone will lecture me in the comments, yes green is associated with computers and technology. The use of a dark palette in the Matrix itself is showcasing the thematically darker environments and of course the lower camera angles looking up at Neo and the likes show that they are usually in a position of power and paired with some low-key lighting suggest mystery in their characters. So in conclusion, Pope is one of the few cinematographers to craft a completely new look for a film. And what I mean by that is when people explain a visual style, they can just say, I want it in the look of The Matrix. And he did this through months of work, in collaboration with the directors, and nailing a new practical effect. Did we imagine that many people would enjoy a sci-fi kung fu movie with western stars performing martial arts in a plot that no studio could understand? No. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, not so if you did, a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, bye!